they might be a new guy on the job or you know someone who's just i don't know protective or something like that but yeah it it winds up being the application issue so that's when we say it's not a layer 3 issue it's a layer 7 issue there, there's also a layer 8 issue and <laughs> layer 8 is when the there's no layer 8 layer 8 is like the person it's the person's issue the person is not so smart or the person is doing something wrong or it's the it's the issue with the person i like to call this uh picnic as well p i c n i c which stands for it's a picnic issue which stands for problem in chair not in computer <laughs> so whoever's sitting on the chair is the issue anyway let's take a high level look back at what we talked about in this whole video this video was about the OSI model and I didn't want to just go over the OSI model the same way everybody else does so I used an example from my job of troubleshooting a real life connectivity issue so I started off with Jack's client computer here in San Jose who's trying to make a connection to the web server here in Ashburn Virginia okay to the Apache HTTP server here since I managed the firewall I did a packet capture on the firewall to look for Jack's initial sin flag to look for Jack's initial SYN packet. So the when Jack entered www.studyingosyntheory.com on his computer and hit enter on his browser, he interacted with the application presentation and session layer. The, app, the easy way to remember what the application layer is, it's the closest thing to the user, to you, to me. Browser, that's the closest thing to us. We're not really that close to the router or the switch. The closest thing to us is the browser, the application. So layer seven is the one closest to the user. So he entered, Enter. He pressed enter on a browser and hit enter, and the packet went down all the way down the application, presentation, and session layer. Okay, this is all where Chrome browser takes place, the application layer. Now, if you studied the TCP/IP model, you'll see that the application, presentation, and session layer are condensed together, and then the transport network layer are its own layer together, and then I'm pretty sure the date link phys physical layer are its own layer together. But we'll go over that in another video. So, Jack. Uh, entered the website web, uh, website in his browser. It went through all of the top three uh, layers. It assigned it. The computer assigned the packet a source port five six two two five. It assigned it an IP address and it has a MAC address and a physical uh, connection. So it went through layer six five four three two one. Okay. It took that. The packet left his computer. It went to the switch. Switch is a layer two issue. Uh, layer 2 device is in layer 2 of the OSI model so the layer 2 since that's its only responsibility it's just gonna look at the MAC address to make sure that packet has a MAC address and it does so it takes that and sends it down the physical layer again and onto the firewall the firewall checks out the physical layer checks the MAC address and also checks the network and the IP address because firewalls are layer 3 device layer 3 deals with IP addresses after it's done all the check, it sends it back down to the data link, to the physical, and on to the switch. Switch does this thing, sends it next to the next router, to the edge router, edge router, the one facing the internet, and the packet hits the internet. Okay, the internet does its magical thing and sends it to the router where it needs to go, to where the web, the network where the web server is located. The router takes it, looks at the IP address again, because it's a layer three device, sends it back down the two layers, hits the switch, hits the firewall hits the switch again and makes it all the way to the web server here it comes to the physical layer the server checks the MAC address the IP address to transport uh, the TCP port remember it's supposed to be port 80 if I'm supposed to change this while I'm editing in the in the software if you don't see it changed just pretend this destination port is supposed to say 80 but it should say 80 I'm saying it now but when I listen back and edit this video obviously I'm going to change it I don't even know why I'm telling you this right now and then it makes it past the transport layer and makes it all the way to the session presentation application layer, that, that packet. So if every if the packet is passed through Jack's computer, through his uh, network in San Jose, through the internet, all the way to Ashburn, Virginia, and it makes it all the way through the physical data link network and transport layer, then the only thing left for an issue if it's not working is something in the application layer, something on the Apache server that's that's uh, that's happening. and this, the, 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 the example we looked at was web traffic. The same goes for email. Jack goes to his Outlook, which is an application, right? Outlook is an application, and uh, SMTP, port 25, is on the application layer of the OSI model. Does that make sense? You're sending email using port 25 using Outlook. So Outlook is an application. Port 25 is in the application layer. You can associate it that way. It goes through his network, the, the email, goes through the internet, hits the destination server, goes through the layers of the uh, the server, and if it's an application issue, then it's an issue on the email 
server on the web server itself oh, i'm sorry on the email server itself it doesn't have to just be a web server it can be email server it could be a network time protocol server any of those things this is basic troubleshooting and if you understood everything i said in this video right now then you're probably even you know given some parameters you're probably even ready for a very very entry-level networking uh job because these are some of the interview questions we ask if if a firewall is down how would you troubleshoot connectivity if a packet makes it through your your network but not to the other side of the network how would you troubleshoot that some good answers are using ping which makes sure there's a route in place on each device to forward the packet or using traceroute traceroute uses icmp as does ping and traceroute will tell us that if we trace route from the firewall to the destination, it'll show us the hops. It'll show us the switch, this router, this router, this switch, this firewall. And if there's a break in the connection somewhere, the hops will stop right there. That's a bit too complicated for this video, but that's another way to troubleshoot. So I hope that video helped of the OSI model. Again, um, as with everything CSSP and all these videos and stuff, I know it's dry. Uh, I hope to think my videos aren't dry, but some of the videos are, they just kind of drone on and on. I kind of drone on and on. So it doesn't just take one time to watch these videos. Just like my Kerberos video and my software development lifecycle video and systems uh, video, you're not expected to sit there and, and be super excited about and hang on to every one of my words. You know, just watch it for five minutes. And when you can't stand my voice anymore, you can't stand what I'm saying, pause it, walk away, come back to it later.